consultant in the field of economics, um, specializing in deficit funding. So from such a story, uh, first of all, welcome. Thank you very much. All right. So when you look at such a story, yes. from where you sit, uh, just give me your reaction. Well, this is a shame. Where we are as a nation is a shame. And not only that, we've been here actually for the longest time. We can blame this on the pandemic. But truly speaking, if you talk to Wanjiko or even Akinyi who's just spoken, yes. and you ask her how her fortunes were five years ago, ten years ago, they, they didn't differ too much from where they are now. Mm -hmm. So it's a bad situation getting worse. It's not that we're going, going from good to bad. We're going from bad to worse. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So when we look at the economy, because the economy is what uh, is contributing to this, and from Brand uh, Giorgio Cheno's story, um, you can tell inflation. We are at seven point nine percent. So when we look at the economy, and um, as a country, where are we, and wh what is exactly happening? Why are we having this uh, issue of uh, prices uh, skyrocketing? each and every time well i think this kind of the information on this is already out in the public where whether we're talking about the wars in europe whether we're talking about a post-pandemic uh, economy yes. whether we're talking about the ills of corruption over time mm -hmm. all these have come in and are just making again a situation from bad to worse now to some extent this is not kenya's uh, this is not a problem um exclusive to kenya mm -hmm. this is a global problem mm -hmm. this is happening all over the world we're seeing um sri lanka the president has just run away we're seeing uh, inflation in Ghana. We're seeing um, parts of Asia, the same thing happening. So what is happening to us is happening there. So we need to look at it not just from a Kenyan perspective, but from an international perspective. And some of us are coming with different solutions and saying, perhaps it's time not to try and tweak the current model, but to do away with the current model we have. Because this model has been used, it's been chewed, it's no longer working. Aina lava, it does not have any more flavor. It cannot produce any more result. Mm -hmm. So we are coming and saying, as, as, as modern monetary economists, we're saying it's time for a new economic model. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when we talk about the new economic model, when we do away with, the, with what is, has been there before, so what, what are some of the things that we need to go through in order now to come up with this new? Okay, good. One of the areas we need to look at is taxation. Mm -hmm. And the, where, where, what is the real role of taxation vis-a-vis -vis the government's need to generate income, to generate revenue, right? So what's really happening is there's a new lens. I see you're wearing spectacles. There's a new lens the government needs to wear <laughs> mm -hmm. to see more clearly yes. as to where, what is the true source of money. Is taxes, are, are taxes the true source of government revenue? We say no. Revenue or income or money stems from the government in the first place the government as, as as an entity is the creator of the money originally i'll give you a story as to the history of taxes so when the british came in uh, many years ago and this happened in kenya this also happened as their case studies also for ghana they came in they found a lush land a land that could give them milk and honey coffee really is what they wanted coffee and tea but only a handful of British came into the country, right? And so when they came in and they found, look, we could, we could, we could, um, we could get coffee and tea out of this land. But one of the problems they had was they didn't have enough labor. Remember, only a handful of British really were here. Yes. And to, to grow enough coffee, um, to export it back home, they needed a large amount of, uh, of people. They needed human capital. So what did they do? They come and offer that to Kenyans and say, look, if you work here for us, we'll pay you. But remember, the Kenyan doesn't need his currency. Mm. We were a non-monetized economy. We, we were not using money. We were using other forms of trade, but we were not using money. Mm -hmm. So to the Kenyan, and that time the British were using the rupee when they were here, mm. the rupee had no value to me. So you had to get me, the Kenyan, to want that rupee from you, right? So this is then what they did, which was a coercive effort. Together, once they sort of colonized us, they then said, you have to pay us, the British government, one rupee of tax per year, or we burn your hut, we burn your home. Mm -hmm. That's the coercive bit, right? So now, out of that coercion, you've made the Kenyan need, there's a demand for the rupee, right? Mm -hmm. He wonders, I don't want my house to be burnt down. I need to get the rupee. The only people with rupee were whom? The British. Yes. 
And so this is what they, they told us. They said, for you to get this rupee, come and work in my coffee farm. Mm -hmm. The Kenyan goes, fine, this is fine. Um, I don't like the situation, but in order to save my house, I'll come and work. So he comes and he comes, works on the farm, tills the land, produces the coffee. The British take the coffee and export it. He's paid his money. He pays back the tax. His house is safe. This is the origin of tax in Africa. It was not that the British government needed the rupee from us. It is our, it's them who gave it to us so that we can pay it back in form of tax so that they can get us to work on the coffee farm. Mm -hmm. It was a coercive effort to get the Africans to work on the land. But it wasn't that the British needed the rupee from us as form of revenue. Where did the rupee come from in the first place? It came from them. So I, I pay you this pen and then I tell you I need the pen back in form of taxes. But I'm the one who paid you this pen. So where did the pen come from? The pen came from me. Mm -hmm. So this is the history of taxes. So when government starts opening its eyes as to the true source of money, money stems from the government. It doesn't stem from the people. It is we who need the government money, not the government that needs our money. Mm -hmm. And when you change that mindset, then you start, government starts telling itself, out of our capacity mm -hmm. to create new money in a controlled manner, in a non-inflationary manner, we can fund as government any effort or service or development project that we need because we as the government are the source of the money. They are the source of the rupee. They are the source of the pen. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. As long as it is non-inflationary, the source is government. So the U.S. is doing that right now. It's the, what they call, so this is in, in, in economic terms, it's called deficit funding. But really what it is is the government is borrowing money from itself and never paying back. So it borrows from its central bank and never pays back. It doesn't borrow from the central bank's reserves. The central bank doesn't have the money. It borrows from its capacity to create new money. So it says we need two billion, two billion. The law is passed, the necessary things are done, the government is given the two billion. Mm -hmm. It accounts it as a deficit. It says we borrowed two billion, not from your reserves, not from central bank's reserves, but from its capacity to create new money. It injects that money in the economy, in the various, it plugs the holes in the various places. The government gets to establish itself. The U.S. is doing this right now. 40% of this year's U.S. budget is deficit funded. A whooping 40%. Last year, it was 50%, the highest they've ever had. All right. So before I continue, uh, what is your uh, take on uh, the country's debt where we are? Well, again, it's because we're wearing the wrong lens. Right? Mm -hmm. We feel that we need to get somebody else's money, convert it to our money, and then use it. Mm -hmm. So government will go and borrow, and largely half of that money will be used to pay out in Kenya shillings. So whether it's the, whether it's the government workers, whether they're buying cement from uh, one of the cement companies to be able to do their development projects, we do not need other people's money to convert it to then utilize it in Kenya shillings. You see what, what I'm trying to say? So again, it's a lens we're wearing that's wrong. Now, for projects that are denominated in foreign currency, that's where the problem comes in. Because if you have to import steel, vehicles, so on and so forth, then you do need foreign currency, right? So you do need actual dollars. Mm -hmm. But right now, our debt, about 50% of it, is Kenyan debt. Is debt from uh, the government, either borrow, borrowing from the commercial banks, the, the bond markets. So half of it is already in Kenyan shillings, meaning it was used in Kenyan shillings on the ground. We did not need to borrow um, largely four, about four trillion shillings from the Kenyan market. The Kenyan government could have gone back to itself and said, if four trillion is what is needed, if that's non-inflationary, could we have simply created the four trillion in Kenya shillings and utilized it to fund development expenditure. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter where the pocket comes from, uh, where the money comes from, as long as it goes into the same pocket. It can come from A, it can come from B. Mm -hmm. So right now, even as we're speaking today, with a new lens, the government can cut our debt by half. At least the Kenyan debt, it's very possible to pay all the suppliers who uh, they've defaulted on over the years, to be able to pay back all the bonds that they've borrowed, to be able to fund the current expenditure. Non-inflationary. I'm not even talking about any new type of projects. Just the current projects they're involved in, 
we can pay back if we had borrowed that money from the Kenyan market. That means then our suddenly our our, our debt um, our debt ceiling or, our, or what we owe in terms of debt goes up to got down to four trillion Kenyan shillings in one stroke. The government can do that today by applying the mindset of deficit funding by applying the mindset that the money Kenyan shillings the Kenyan shilling comes from the Kenya government. It doesn't come from the market. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Um, there you have it, and I believe uh, Tony um, Wente has explained uh, really well on where we are and what is causing these uh, prices to hike. All right, that, that's it from uh, KTN uh, Business.